Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Jeremy Morton. I'm the Public Engagement Manager at the History Colorado Center. I'm Megan Peterson. I'm a longtime volunteer with History Colorado. And we're here to bring you a new cooking tutorial series based on our volunteer cookbook. This is called uh, Across Colorado Recipes and Recollections. And this was written by the volunteers of History Colorado. What we're making today is uh, we are making buckhorn exchange red chili with buffalo and sausage. So we're going to cook a little, share a little history, um, should be fun. All right, let's get started with the ingredients and then stick around at the end and we'll learn a little bit about the buckhorn exchange. Garlic. <laughs> Kidney beans. Petite diced tomatoes. Did you mean to get petite, petite, petite? Petite? Was that your intention? That's what they had at the store. Plus tomato of quarantine. You take what you can find. Onion! Pinto beans. Chili powder. Green pepper. Diced green chilies. Hot. Bouillon cube? What's a bouillon cube? Um, it's like a concentrated <laughs> flavor of chicken. <laughs> Celery. Vinegar. Himalayan pink. So oh, I was going to say sea salt, but it's, it's, it's the mountains. It's Definitely not sea. It's it was salt. probably sea at some point. Cumin. Garlic salt. Black pepper. Ground bison. Well, that's what the recipe calls for, but we got ground beef. Jimmy Dean hot pork sausage. King of sausage right here, Jimmy Dean. When you think of sausage, what's the first name you think of? Jimmy Dean. Sugar. Water. We're making this vegan buckhorn exchange recipe based on our volunteer cookbook. You know, a big like soup pot, or if you had a very big kind of tall skillet, I think this would also work. Um, but probably something pretty deep is gonna be the best. The other thing I would recommend is just kind of having um, all your ingredients out. Um, you can even like pre-cut stuff and pre-measure stuff because that'll make it easier when you add it. I'm not an expert, um, I'm just a home cook. Um, but that, I think that's like a really cool thing about this cookbook is that it, you know, the recipes came from people that are home cooking. Um, and so I think that's what really makes it special. Um, you know, but feel free to like, kind of do your own thing, whatever flavors you like or don't like, you can kind of adjust it as needed. Um, and that's some of the things that we're doing today based on stuff we could find or already had. I'm gonna just chop my vegetables and have them ready. So uh, this recipe calls for half a cup of onion. Um, so in just like a, so it's a quarter inch dice. Um, I'm not gonna be that precise. I'm gonna dice it um, and we'll just see kind of how much, um, it'll probably be about half this onion. Um, and then it also calls for a half a cup of celery. So I have two sticks of celery that I'll chop up. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna do is it's just as a medium green pepper. Um, so this is a green bell pepper, which I think will work just fine. And then um, this recipe also calls for three tablespoons dry minced garlic. Um, but what we're gonna do, you know, I already had a garlic clove. Um, I think, you know, hopefully people have garlic. Um, and we're just gonna dice this and cook it in when we put in the onion and the celery and the pepper. So I chopped up um, two stalks of celery and that did you know, got us about a little more than half of a cup, which I think is fine. I don't think it's ever a, a problem to have like a little bit more of something. So what I'm gonna do is, as I'm cutting all of my produce, so my celery, my pepper, my onion, and my garlic, I'm gonna put them all together in this bowl because later on after we brown our meat, they're all gonna go in at the same time. So I'm just gonna put them all together as I chop. Next, I'm gonna chop um, our onion. I think we'll probably need just half of this onion. So I already cut it in half and I'm just gonna dice it and then I'll put it in this bowl with my celery. Did I get my little 
fries in there. Mm -hmm. The next thing we're gonna do is do our green pepper, um, and we're just gonna chop all of this um, again into just like a small dice. The other thing I'm doing, this is just like a side note, um, is saving some of my vegetable scraps, so like the ends of my onions, I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna save it to make a vegetable stock um, later on. Not included in this video. Or you could compost it. Not us. Not us. We, we can't compost here. <laughs> we live here, in an apartment. But uh, if you can compost, it's a great way to reduce your food waste. So this recipe calls for three tablespoons of dry minced garlic. Since I already had a thing of fresh garlic, I thought that would be a nice substitution. And then we're also gonna put some garlic salt in with our spices. Um, but if you have you know, garlic powder, that would work. Um, or like that dried minced garlic is fine. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do like two cloves of fresh garlic and I'm gonna put that in my same bowl with my other veggies. So to recap, um, what we've done is we've chopped up two stalks of celery, half of an onion, um, a whole green bell pepper, and two cloves of garlic, and that's all in here. So it's ready to go in after I've browned my meat. So we've got um, our, this is a Dutch oven. I think this is a seven quart Dutch oven. The recipe just says a large skillet. So um, I guess kind of think about what skillet you have. Um, a soup pot might work the best. Um, or if you have a Dutch oven, you can use that. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, we've got essentially two pounds of meat and water and tomatoes and beans. So you do want something that's pretty tall. We're using ground beef. This is uh, one pound of ground beef. The recipe, is you know. Is it leaning? Is there beef Comment lean? from the audience. No, <laughs> this is not lean. This is 80-20, um, which Ooh. means it's 80% um, meat, 20% fat. So it is not lean, but fat equals flavor. Mm -hmm. So um, it's gonna really, you know, I think add a lot to this dish. You could use turkey. I think that would work well. If you have bison, I think obviously that's very true to this original buckcorn exchange recipe. I think that's a great, um, this is a great use for your bison. Um, but ground beef is gonna work very similarly. It's gonna taste great. And you can use lean if you want. I prefer 80-20. Um, but again, it's whatever you prefer or whatever you can find. Um, this, oh, here we go. It's like Vanna White. This recipe, uh, so this serves six to eight. We're doing the full recipe, but you definitely could half this. Probably what we'll do, since there's only two of us, is um, we'll eat some for the next few days and then probably freeze some. Most stews, soups, chilies, things like that freeze really well. Thank you for holding this. Let's dump it in here. Let's do oh, it. I'm We're gonna part dump of it. it. I'm at the oh. oh, okay. There it goes, all at once. Terrifying. Do you want to save this styrofoam? I do not want to save the styrofoam. <laughs> um. You want the masher? Oh I used, yeah. I, I did. I used to just mash <laughs> with a spatula, and then Meg said, "Where's your meat masher thing?" Hold and it up to the camera. <laughs> And now, so now we have this thing uh, in quadrants, and uh, now we got much more efficient uh, meat mashing. It's very good for breaking up ground meat when you're trying to brown it. Again, not a required utensil, tool, whatever. You could very easily use a spatula, like Jeremy used to, or any kind of any kind of wooden spoon thing will be fine. I'm also gonna add in my, this is like a breakfast pork sausage. Um, we love spicy food, uh, so I got the hot, but you definitely could just get the, like a regular kind of pork sausage um, if you don't like spicy stuff. Jimmy Dean. Squeeze out our sausage, not sponsored by Jimmy Dean. <laughs> you should know. 
Is there really a Jimmy Dean? I don't know. That's a good question. Is that I think a, there's like... It's like Betty Crocker. Yeah, I feel like um, it's a lot of food characters that are like not based on an actual person. Chef Boyardee, I heard though. Is he real? I think so. If Chef Boyardee is real, then Jimmy Dean's probably real. Jimmy Dean sounds like a... But I thought Betty Crocker person. was real. She's not real. I put both my ground beef and my pork sausage in here. I'm just kind of mashing it up to sort of break it up. Um, and we want it to get a little bit brown and then we're gonna add our one cup of water. Follow the recipe, kids. I have cooked from a recipe quite a few times. Yeah, three cups total He doubted water. me. One cup of water initially. Yes, so we'll add in more water later. I'm curious to know like what other people are cooking during this time. I feel like we kind of switched from um, this is on YouTube, right? Yeah, I'm we gonna edit comment it. And stuff, right? Yeah, probably. that's what I mean. Like, oh, share with us. I'm gonna add in that one cup of water, kind of slowly. This recipe is using ground beef um, instead of bison, um, which I think is a good substitution. Um, but you know, typically, um, like the Buckhorn Exchange is known for having all these kind of exotic Western meat. And if quarantine is over, um, that's a, a fun place I'd like to go. Um, Jeremy always teases me about eating like rattlesnake and stuff. We did try alligator in Miami. Yeah. You know, one time. It was, it was good. Chewy. Very chewy. <laughs> I also never had Rocky Mountain oysters, and that is one thing I don't think I feel the need to eat or try ever in my life. I haven't been to the Buck Corn Exchange myself. I want to go there when quarantine is lifted. Um, but do any of y'all have you know memories or fun experiences going there, trying some new kind of exotic meat? Let us know. It's always fun to hear about, especially these old, you know, traditional places that people go to. Um, the Buckhorn Exchange has been around since. Definitely old, older than Tokyo Joe's. So this is starting to get more brown. I'm not seeing as much pink. Place ground buffalo meat and pork sausage in a large scale. Add one cup of water. Cook until meats are brown. Use a potato masher to crumble meat in the cup. Drain fat. I don't really think, well, like, I like fat. It's, it's the recipe says to drain the fat. Since we added water, you know, it's not, and this wasn't really too fatty. I'm actually just gonna leave the liquid that's in there. Mm, smells good. All right, we're gonna chop again. The next thing I'm gonna do is add in all my chopped veggies. So again, this is why it was nice to do this earlier because we could just focus on browning our meat and we already have these ready to go. So these are gonna go in. Then we're gonna add in some of our, a few of our canned ingredients and our spices. And this is all gonna kind of cook together. We're gonna do our chili powder, a fourth of a cup, which is not a small amount. You could do less and I think it's still gonna taste great. Okay. Next we're gonna do um, a tablespoon, no I lied, two tablespoons of ground cumin. I love cumin, very aromatic, as the chefs say. We're gonna do one tablespoon of salt. Morton's kosher salt is very salty. Um, <laughs> the salt is salty? The salt is salty. The crystals are bigger than, say, iodized salt or like sea salt sometimes you get, and so you really get more of that saltiness. So I'm actually gonna do about half um, of a tablespoon. Now, the what nice about our pink Himalayan sea salt? Oh, I ditched that because... What? I ditched this because... Because it's pink, huh? No, not because it's pink. Grind it and it was gonna take me a long time to get yeah. a tablespoon of salt. You sure it's not because it's from the Himalayas? It's, no, I, I mean, I love the Rocky Mountains. John Denver didn't write a song called uh, Himalayan no. Mountain high. True. You heard it here, folks. We're also going to add a tablespoon of pepper. So 
So we have our chili powder, we have our cumin, we have our salt and our pepper. This is sizzling, this is looking really good. We're gonna do one tablespoon of sugar. We already had it added our garlic um, that was chopped. I am gonna just sprinkle a little bit more of this garlic salt. To recap, we added our um, celery, our onion, our green pepper, our chopped garlic. We added our chili powder, our cumin, our salt, pepper, sugar, a little bit of garlic salt for fun. And then the next thing we're gonna add um, to this is some diced green chilies. I grew up in Pueblo, I love green chili, um, and I love the spice, so I got a hot can. So now that we've added those ingredients, we are gonna let this simmer um, for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit, and I am gonna put the lid on this. Sizzle, sizzle. Sizzling. <laughs> you eating cookie dough. He thinks it's so funny that I can't use the electric can opener. Ooh, Meg trying the electric. Ah, I don't know how. <laughs> now you gotta lift it up first. I literally yeah. never use this. Yeah, there you go. And it never fails me though. Never lets me down. Sometimes the old ways are the good ways. These pinto beans are from Cooners. This is my favorite brand of beans. They're from Colorado. Cooners is my brand choice. Beans. I wonder where in Colorado they're made. This is distributed Fairball, Minnesota. What? <gasps> Shocking development. I'm so confused. It says Cooners of Colorado since 1864. Cooners brand was founded in 1864 by Maximilian Max Cooner. Is it Cooner? I hope I'm saying that right. Is it Cooner? Cooner? Cunner. No, you think it's. Yeah, it's probably Cooner. <laughs> Might be. If it was Cooner, it'd start with a C. How could they? How could they? They broke our hearts. I'll still buy them, All of that aside, we're gonna add in our beans. So we've added in our pinto beans and our kidney beans, um, tossed it in with our meat. And the next thing we're gonna do is add in our tomatoes. So I'm gonna add these in, and then we'll add in whatever remaining ingredients we have. I think just vinegar and our bouillon cubes. The vinegar is kind of just add like a brightness to um, all the other flavors that are going on here. So we're gonna add that. Um, so let's do that. Two tablespoons. So I could not find the bouillon cubes at the store. So I did find chicken, so I'm gonna add two of those to kind of make up for some of that flavor. The other ingredient that we're leaving out is Worcestershire. Worcestershire. I think you got it first time. Worcestershire? Yeah. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. I think Worcestershire is... Worcestershire. If it's in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> we... I elected to leave that out because it was only a tablespoon um, and I didn't really know if we'd be able to use it um, and I felt like it was okay to leave that out. The last step we're gonna do is add in two cups of water. And we're gonna mix this together. And then we're gonna let this simmer for 30 minutes. So this has been simmering for uh, about 30 minutes. And, ooh, steamy. We're gonna put this in a bowl and eat it. Um, looks delicious, I'm very excited about it. Thank you to the Buffer in exchange for this awesome recipe and to the volunteers at History Colorado for this great cookbook. Um, yeah, can't wait to eat. I hope you enjoyed cooking with us, and I hope your buckhorn exchange red chili with buffalo and sausage recipe was as delicious as ours. Now that we've done that, let's learn a little bit more about Denver's most historic restaurant. In 1875, at the age of 10, Henry Shorty Scout Zietz moved to Colorado. In the 1880s, he was able to make a small fortune in the mining industry alongside Horace Tabor. When the price of silver crashed in 1893, Zietz saw the writing on the wall. 
He took $5,000 from his savings and opened a restaurant and saloon. Located in a two-story building at 1000 Osage Street, Zeet's Buckhorn Exchange opened on November 17, 1893. Zeet's was a well-known big game hunter from his time working with Buffalo Bill Cody. As a member of Buffalo Bill's Band of Scouts, Zeet's earned the nickname Shorty Scout. His reputation brought people in the door, and Zeet's used his hunting trophies to decorate the buckhorn. Many of those animals still deck the walls today. One is even a golden eagle from the 1890s. Don't try catching one of those today. You might end up in jail for 10 years. The location of the restaurant just across the street from the railroad also helped to make the Buckhorn Exchange a success. Numerous railroad workers got paid, crossed the street to cash their check, and got something to eat and drink. In 1905, Theodore Roosevelt parked his train in the rail yard across from the Buckhorn Exchange. After dinner and drinks, he asked Zeitz to be his hunting guide. TR became the first of five presidents and countless celebrities to enjoy the Buckhorn's gaming menu. Zeitz ran the restaurant until he passed in 1949. His son Henry Zeitz Jr. went on to run the restaurant until 1978 when failing health forced him to sell to a group of people known as the Buckhorn Associates. They kept the restaurant much the same and even added some of the more wild meats the Buckhorn is known for. Now a National Historic Landmark, the Buckhorn Exchange is one of the few places left in Denver where you can be immersed in history and transported back to the days of gunslingers, gold miners, and the mythical Wild West.